Well, hello, model car fans. Welcome to the Muscle Car Modeler. My name is Ral, and here we're digging into my stash on some kits that uh, I remember building in the day and really enjoying. And, you know, I went on a bit of a spending spree last year and uh, picked up a bunch of the Corvette C4 um, kits that uh, Ravel and Monogram had put out at that time. Well, they're pretty much all Monogram, but uh, had pumped them out. And it's kind of weird to think that they're all pretty much annuals. Um, I don't think any of the C4s were ever re-released after their initial release. Um, but thankfully they did pump them out like crazy. Uh, so they're not really hard to find, but it's just kind of weird to think the 84 snap kit, the 85 kit, the 87 convertible kit, like all of these, the ZR1 kits, the 89 ZR1 kits, um, they, they pumped them out, but they're all pretty much like one issue releases or pretty much like in that one year. Well, this is the Callaway Speedster, which is uh, one of my favorites actually, because um, it's such a unique variant of the C4 and a rare one, um, especially the Speedster. But I mean, looking at this box and everything, this one's a little bit more worn. I got two of these, uh, but this box is a little bit more worn, but this kit um, hasn't been uh, opened or anything other than me. But uh, there's the bad boy on the box. and. When it comes to the Speedster version, these were very expensive. The Callaway conversion was $30,000, like $32,000 on top of the normal Corvette. And then the interior was another $17,000 option. And this body kit was another like 17,000 or something like that, which made this you know a $100,000 car when they were new, which is why um, 10 or 12 were made. Technically 10 like this, there were two ZR1s built too. So that brings it up to 12. But anyway, this is the twin turbo bad boy with 450 horsepower. And um, um, just quite quite the, quite the machine. But uh, checking out the box here, and it's got all the parts too. It's not just the body. There's the two intercoolers, the L98 engine with the intake duct going down, um, the really radical interior and it gives you decals in a couple of different colors to do it. Here's the convertible cross brace um, and the twin turbos are here. I mean, it's all here and this kit has all of it. And uh, issued in 1992, the car is technically a 1991, um, which is the most potent variant of this. And Callaway uh, stepped away from the twin turbo option after 92, because, you know, 93, well, 92 was, uh, uh, the new LT1 motor, um, and that's why. But uh, let's get into this, because this is quite a neat kit, and there's so much of this kit that is just so unique. Here's the smoked glass, that's for the Speedster only. Then the piece that goes in the, the middle here, the uh, backup lights, the side backup ones and the front ones, all specific to this body. Um, you know, very, very unusual. And then uh, we'll get into the green stuff here. Uh, it's got the same Goodyear um, Eagle TR um, tires, ZR tires, and these are these are pretty cool and nicely done. And there's two different uh, widths here, you know, a little bit skinnier and a little bit wider. So there's two, but you know, pretty much all of these kits have these tires, and they're nice tires. And here's this nice flyer um, working on this kit off and on to the '91 Mustang, and then the ZR1, but um, just a couple of the ones that were available at that time. Kind of neat seeing these flyers that are in here and the instructions on it. And here's those decals with the the multiple colors here that are real specific. So you can pick any of them. And there were some pretty wild. He would do whatever he wanted when it came to these. Yeah, $15,000 paint job. Um, it was just, you know, a lot of money. But this is a very unique um, tool here. But... And it starts off kind of funny where just putting having you put the glass on the body first. So it's kind of just an unusual build orientation. So it kind of makes it a little bit interesting to build. But I built the uh, Grand Sport recently and really enjoyed that, the convertible of that. And, uh, you know, I bought this at pretty much the same time as buying those kits. But this one has all the unique parts to it. Um, let's get in here, dig out the chrome tree here. Here's the intercoolers. The control arms, here's the two turbos, or half the turbos. Um, brace here. 
the cats and the exhaust pipes, the valve covers here, uh, the other halves of the turbos, the intake, the rear view mirrors and the mirrors, the injection right here, the exhaust tips, the Callaway wheels, and then uh, that's the alternator brace or compressor brace. Just all this stuff, the tune port injection, the rear control arms, and even these really cool Callaway uh, marked exhaust manifolds. So they went that far. So a lot of very unique parts right here for this particular version. And I'll start putting some of this stuff back in here. I'll put the decals in there. There we go. And then we'll dig into the plastic here. But here's the very unique Speedster body. There you go with the Callaway body parts all the way around and the rear tail panel. You know, so this is, this body is only for this issue. But even if you want to convert the parts, they did some things like the hood things were moved farther out. So I can tell you the hood's got the Callaway scoops on there for the intercoolers, but they move these around so you can't really swap this hood from other bodies because of it, of what they did there. Um, here's the interior tub, which nothing really different here. Suspension, the pulleys, more of the front suspension, the leaf spring, the rear axle, distributor right here, um, starter, shifter, and all these parts here. And there's the engine block halves for the small block and the manual transmission. Um, but all of this uh, is used in other kits. So this is one of the few trees that is recycled. But here's the rest of it here. Uh, the dash, braces here, wheel backs, the under hood, um, fan, steering wheel. Then this chassis, but this chassis is specific to this thing because all of these body pieces that come out, they line up with the body shell and everything. So this back area is different. And all of this is different compared to other variants. So there's a number of changes in there. And you've got the air cleaner assembly, but this thing dips down and goes down the front of the radiator uh, where the turbos are. It doesn't go right into the intake. And then this piece section of it is actually body color on these Callaway cars. We got the firewall, which is you know pretty common, the wheel backs here. Here's the very specific tail lights to the Callaway conversion and the third brake light. And here's uh, the seat, the interior, a lot of the all manner compressor emissions, the bucket seats, door panels, small block heads, CR1 heads, which you don't need. This duct for the in front of the radiator to help duct there. Door panels, mirrors right there, which these mirrors are pretty specific to this particular car. Then you've got this brace. That's a convertible brace. This is a convertible piece, which I don't believe you use on this. Well, you might. Um, brakes, some extra bracing, but these are all the intercooler parts for the turbos um, to the intake. This goes to the intake, then the brakes. So some more unique parts right there for this variant. And then here's uh, the last of it, the engine parts here and the rear suspension parts and the radiator fans, the piece of the trans, and that Callaway unmistakable nose cone. Now, I think these four ducts is why they spread out the uh, hood mounting things, and then this mounts differently, so they had to change all that as well. So it kind of makes using all of that stuff a little bit more difficult. And here's my missing seat. So lots of really cool stuff in this thing, and one that uh, um, I built way back in the day. Here's some pictures of... Uh, the one I did back then, which I don't have anymore. I really don't know what happened to that particular build. Uh, I loved it. Now, I remember I didn't actually paint it. I used the, the molded in color plastic. Uh, so that one wasn't painted, but uh, it was still fun to build and everything. And I brush painted the interior and followed the color scheme on it, which I'll probably do with this one. But Callaway, they made a, a number of these Corvettes and they were available in all the states, 50 state legal and um, emission wise and everything. But just the only thing that really slowed them down was the price. You can literally get it for the same price as a ZR1 um, and, and spend more than a ZR1, but you got a little bit more performance out of it and everything. But uh, totally, totally fun car and everything. And, you know, recently I got 
I had a second kit, but I'll show you this one too because I wanted to make a uh, coupe. So this one I had an 85 and I really just got this, um, a parts kit in 85 that somebody had cut the front suspension off and I think they were trying to graft the front suspension into, but it had really nice glass. This part was there and I really wanted to take the time and actually build a Callaway coupe because they use this body kit on multiple cars and they built like a total of 500 cars with the twin turbo engine option and everything. So I wanted to do one as a coupe and I've seen a couple of them done. So I pulled out my spare kit since I had two kits and decided I'll spend some time um, as this is really not a hard conversion. You just got to take your time and Dremel and route all that stuff out and taper it and everything and then get this and glue it into the right spot. There's no putty work done to this at all. Just careful grafting and everything. But got this one um, to this point, and now I just gotta pick a color and everything for it. Um, but it's got all the parts and all the stuff there to do it. So, you know, this is gonna be my coupe and the other one will be my speedster. Um, you know, got lots of plans for these kits. I wanna build all of them. But uh, like I said, I, I built the, the one as a kid really loved it and uh you know or i should say a teenager and uh but i don't remember what happened to it if it got broken destroyed but i don't have it anymore and i, I really don't know why but anyway um got a couple in my stash looking forward to building them along with everything else in my stash have plans to build them and that's how it goes but uh if you built one of these or if you know about them or got one in your stash uh let me know uh to me it's just a great kit um but they seem to be I don't want to say very plentiful because, you know, when you're looking for one, they seem to be hard to find. But when you're not looking for them, you kind of stumble across them. Uh, and that's, you know, my case here. So it's kind of funny to, to look these over and see, you know, how much faded one is to the other compared to the box arts and everything. But, uh, you know, it's been 30 years since this kit's been out. So it's just kind of weird to think that they've never been reissued. Um, and almost all of these you know, C4 Corvettes and everything, or a lot of the just Ravel monogram Corvettes issued once and, and haven't seen any of them come back and reissue. So it's kind of weird to think about that, but so many modern kits have been going that way as well. Pump out one issue and then we don't see them again. And uh, some of them are great kits. Like to me, this is a great kit. A little finicky to put together that I remember right, but if you take your time on it, it goes together well. But uh, you guys, thank you for uh, tuning in on all of this and enjoying this. You know, it's kind of fun for me too. But uh, you guys, thanks for tuning in, subscribing, and all your comments and everything. I really do appreciate it. And you guys, you have a wonderful weekend, and I will see you next time.